Hello, you're listening to Reviewing History, your comedy history podcast. I'm filmmaker and teacher Brian Rupert, joined here by... As always, Stephen Dagliaco. And... And Jay Yao. Oh. There we go. How we I doing, folks? You. We're good. You're high energy today. I'm ramped you're up. Pumped. I yeah. finally slept for eight hours, so I am good to go. I really do think you look a little younger today. Yeah, you you're, you're glowing. Are you pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to say I'm not, <laughs> but yeah, I guess Anne is like, Brian, you always look like a decrepit zombie when I see you. I, I just noticed you seem well. It's like, you always look like shit, but seem today. Well. <laughs> yeah. Look nice, Brian. Like, thank you. Thank you. It's rare to get a compliment from Anne. That's how you know yeah. it's sincere. <laughs> I think I see two guys who might uh, get nude soon. You know what I mean? Oh. Aunt, your body. My God. What I, do, what I would do. I don't, I don't have the glasses. Are you shaved? Yeah, you, you can't shaved, be Howard without the glasses. You can't be Howard without the glasses, yeah. There's, there's gl- I thought there were glasses. Are there sunglasses? <laughs> you have sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are, guys. Another pick episode. Another pick. Yeah. Another pick. And I feel like we haven't recorded in a while. We haven't in our time. We had like two weeks off. Yeah, it was nice. It was a good break. It yeah, wasn't much of a break for me. <laughs> I, th- I think that's why I'm kind of amped up to do it. Yeah, I'm yeah. always, I'm always knee deep in this shit. So. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it never ends. No, no, it's, no it's endless. Continuous. It's continuous until we get to the level where we could pay people it's, to do it. It's for a us. Sisyphusian yeah. task. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Sisyphus- can you spell? Sisyphusian? Can you spell that? No. <laughs> no, I won't even attempt it. I try all the time, and you I'm just like Sisyphus. Yeah, and I'm why? Like, why does that come? I up? love Sisyphus. <laughs> <laughs> Sisyphian task. I may have had an ulterior motive in using that term to try and get you to say right. it because I knew you'd fuck it up. <laughs> yeah, I, look, if you listen wow. to the show, you know my pronunciation is not good. I know the word. Do you I can, used it. Was it Agamemnon? Agamemnon. Yeah, I'm not. Can you say it? Just say it. Just say it. Agamemnon. Maybe it's just Greek things. Can you say it quick? Agamemnon. He did yeah, it. Yeah, he. he I practiced. He with practice, practice. Yeah. yeah, with time, you could say Sisyphus. 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 Is that Sisyphus? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. You did it. I like type that all the time. I love that phrase. Mm-hmm. But you know, when I'm trying to spell it, I'm like S Y S. Give up. Yeah, I yeah. try to get close. I'll sometimes I'll Google dude who pushes rock. <laughs> you know, and like I get the dude answer and I copy it. Rock. Yeah. Do you do that like when you're worried about your spelling? Oh like, sure. You Google. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You have to. But it's so easy today. Like you just if, if you're just typing something out, it's just an autocorrect. The hardest you know? word in the English language to spell, I'm convinced, is restaurant. Restaurant. Spell restaurant. It. Hold on. Let me let me let me type it in so I can correct you. Okay. I'm gonna look stupid here if I get this wrong. R E S T. Hold on, wait, wait. R E S T. A. Mm-hmm. U. Mm-hmm. R. Mm-hmm. A N T. Yeah. Okay. That's, that wasn't uh, that bad. That wasn't that bad, yeah. <laughs> I, I think we never, need a new hard word. <laughs> I can never remember where the U and the A goes. <laughs> I, think I, know the, yeah. I know offhand the longest word in the English dictionary. Oh, what is it? Anti-disestablishmentarianism. Is that for real? Not even kidding. Yeah, it's the longest word. I, the definition is really difficult to, to remember, though. You know what word I always fuck up? Beautiful. Beautiful? Beautiful. Mm. You put B-O-O. No, you love bootyful. Ghosts. It's not bootyful. <laughs> he loves ghosts. He says, Boo! Boo! Spell it. Beautiful. Yeah. B e a u t i f u l. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's an easy one. That's not bad. Okay. Yeah. Now we're just doing a spelling bee. Yeah. <laughs> the reviewing kind of spelling bee, which it's all like fifth right. grade words. Steve. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> They're not even yeah. like him. He's going to give me something utterly ridiculous. Your word is kumquat. Ooh. That's with a K. K u m. In Latin, Jehovah's uh, talking to nine. <laughs> <laughs> Kumquat. K-U-M. I think it's a Q, actually. Q-U-A-T. You're correct. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, you know why I know that? I bought kumquats recently. Ah. I bought it as a complete joke to try them. I, I don't was even like, know oh, what kumquat is. Uh, I could tell you. What do you know? I <laughs> tell, bought some. Tell me about it. So I thought it was always a funny joke, because it's like, aha, come. And then I, <laughs> I saw it in the I saw it in shop, right? I'm Steve's like, like That's I'm gonna what buy I say this. say to my wife, ha ha. Come. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna buy this and joke around with my friends. Right. And it turns out it's a small like citrus fruit. Is it good? It's kind of like a small orange. Is it tasty? Debatable. Uh, the outside is a nice citrus taste, tastes like an orange. But the inside is the s- most sour thing I've tasted in my life. Mm. So it's it's like a sweet and sour almost. Not like bad. Chicken. Uh, most people would hate them. I'll say that. Very sour. Okay. Tastes nothing like cum. 
<laughs> he compares. Yeah, that's that's the whole reason. I'm like, I gotta see if though. He eats the cum quad and mm. then he eats his cum. Yeah, mine. Yeah, I didn't. Say you were, <laughs> I didn't want to accuse you of being a gay. It's your own. Well, that was the joke. They um <laughs> they say that different fruits will actually affect the taste of that. Yes, I've heard pineapple. Yeah, that's right. true. Yeah. So, you know, in my younger years when I was uh, going on dates, I would actually drink pineapple juice and things mm-hmm. like that in case uh, some action arose. I never did, did it? That's very considerate of you. Well, it is very nice. The, the, the thought process <laughs> is that if it's not miserable, They'll it, do it may again. happen again. It may happen yeah, again. Yeah, I see. Yeah. That's why I take a syringe and inject myself with <laughs> rose water. <laughs> Ant is so Catholic, he actually goes to his church and steals holy water and injects it into his <laughs> dick, and he calls it an Ant G baptism. Power of the That's Lord. Some wonderful sacrilege there, Brian. <laughs> <Thank> Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but we have a first on this show. Huh? We a have first. A first. A first? What's the first? Never happened before. Mm-hmm. We have not one, but two listener emails. This is We insane. got emails? Emails. This must be a result of your trip to the UK. Yes, yes. You went to the UK? It's, I find it hard to believe because I saw you three days in a row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so- we've been hanging out a lot recently. <laughs> Uh, I went on the Two Men No Hope podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second time. It's for the second time. I, I see two men with no hope of getting on that podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they, <laughs> Brian was like telling them he's forcing us to do their show. Wait, we are? <laughs> well, Ant, <laughs> what? <laughs> Ant listened and you didn't. Yeah. I want you guys to do it. I uh, I, I caught the, um, the beginning and the end. I was at work. It was like four in the morning. Okay. And I fell asleep listening to it. And then I woke up in the, at the end. I was like, wait a minute. Brian's talking about me. <laughs> um, yeah, I would do it. But Sounds I'll, like a riveting episode. I don't want to be people. forced on them if they want us. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think they do. But I'm, I'm going to say it. I'm probably their favorite guest. You I, think so? I don't know if anyone's been on two times, but I'm going to assume. You're the first two-timer. I'm going to assume so. Is know? that a Zoom call? Yeah. You should record it with like better mics like with this so you could give them good audio i could but i don't want to come down here well we we have other mics we could do it (laughs) it's not it's not a difficult thing yeah i know why don't worry about the audio i'm worried (laughs) about their quality i want them i want us sounding good 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 anyway so i went on and while i was there i lamented because they get like listener emails right and i was like you know every week on our show i'm always like send an email send an email yeah, but it's always like in passing. We never really. Yeah, it's like an outro. People are probably tuned out. The at whole that premise point. of their show is emails. Yes. Yeah, ours isn't. But I'm like, can we get one? So we actually got two. We got two from them. I think. Uh, so thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. We appreciate it. That's very nice of them. Or their listeners. Is it from them or well, their listeners? One is a listener of ours. Okay. Listener oh, of ours. What? Yes. Oh wait. He well because I put their episode on our feed. Yes. yes. So Ricardo Vasquez. Oh, the man. I mean, it's him. Yeah, it's Ricardo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could, he's basically a friend at this point. That's our boy. Yeah, he's our All boy. All right. So, this is his email. <laughs> hey, fellas. First time, long time. Here's an email. You so know my it. tender feeling towards you three, so I'll save the loving comments for my diary <laughs> entry later tonight and not bore or arouse the listeners. <laughs> he's a good egg. He's a good egg. All right, here's a question for the pod that hopefully will start a chain reaction amongst the review perceivers, <laughs> a.k.a. fans of the show, and they'll follow up with more. Oh gosh. <laughs> question. In your history of watching movies in theaters, what has been the most bizarre, funny, or dangerous experience you've encountered? Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Go uh, in. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, I... I Many, many episodes ago, we had a similar, this this came up, and I told a story that I asked Brian to remove from the thing. So I will just tell a brief version of it and not get into such detail. Uh, I had my first sexual experience in a movie theater, ever. With, with the Brian? Usher? Oh. Not with the Usher. No. With, a, with a nice young lady. Um, who is not my wife, so that's why I didn't want to get into detail. I mean, you now, were a, how, you were a how old were you? I was 14 32. years old. 32. <laughs> 14 years old, watching Anchorman. Uh-huh. Nice. Um, and I received uh, 
Pleasure. Pleasure. Mm. <laughs> what one well, does in a theater. Right, yeah. in the movie. From the, the movie, it gave you laughter. Yes. You, pleasure. Yeah. Yes, exactly. You know, that movie was very popular, so I'm assuming the theater it was... was empty. It was. It had been out for a while. Oh, the movie okay. actually wasn't a big Imagine hit. it was just no, opening no. night, and he just was like... Packed. I remember <laughs> hating the movie until... <laughs> You pleasure. Know, right. <laughs> Until the pleasure. Um, what, do you remember the scene? Okay, so... Do you, <laughs> do you remember, remember the, the scene where Ron Burgundy kicks Baxter the dog off of the... No, I'm sorry, Jack, Jack Black, Black kicks Black. him off the bridge. Okay. I laughed at that while... <laughs> 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 That's how funny that was. <laughs> do you remember which movie theater? It was uh, It was on Highland Boulevard on Staten Island. The, I don't hi think it's any the Highland theater. Boulevard United Artists? It's the only time I've ever been there, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. That theater yeah. was a dump. It was. That was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but Didn't it get like, shot one, up a few times? Because he did say funny experiences. I'm, I'm going to bring up uh, one of your stories. One of my stories? Yeah, yeah. the Popcorn Summer. Oh, <laughs> one of my favorite <laughs> we things We were ever. all there, though. Yeah. Uh, I thought you were going to bring up Mr. Wolf. <laughs> Mr. Wolf? Mr. Wolf. I don't know, Mr. Wolf. The guy who gave you the card at the movie theater, and he wants you to log oh with him. Oh, my God. Oh, the, the live-action RPG guy. I forgot yeah. that ever happened. Oh, that's funny. I've, you had the card for years. You're going to have to rem remind me of that. That's so, like as I that. remember, uh, you were meeting me at the theater, and like you were buying your ticket, mm -hmm. and I was saving the seat. And you came in, and you were like, while I was outside, a man in a wizard robe... <laughs> Came up yes. to me, yes, and said, "My name is Mr. Wolf." Yes. And he tried to get you to like LARP Dude, with him. You, you fucking brought back a marriage. I haven't thought of that since it happened. Holy I shit! I wanted to go. Yeah, he, you he, guys should have went. Yeah, he said, "My name is Mr. Wolf," and he handed me his card, <laughs> and it was for a live action role role playing. Thing now, like if it they actually got, was, it's they got together and these are those these guys that get together in parks dressed as like, like dark wizards, yeah, yeah Darkon yeah. that documentary, yeah. yeah, and they throw things at them and yell two damage. Yeah, like if you love bolt. documentaries about freaks and weirdos, Darkon, Darkon A plus. Yeah, right. Dark, that's movie. cool. There's Great a guy movie. who calls himself Cardboard <laughs> who shows up to the LARPs yeah. and all he does is lays on the floor <laughs> with a piece of cardboard <laughs> over him. There's like goblins that like collect gold. <laughs> yeah, there were dark elves that speak their own language. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah Mr. Wolf. But but you want to talk about the popcorn summer? Uh, the popcorn the, summer's more your story than yeah. it is. So popcorn summer is. <laughs> If I remember, we were seeing... One of the funniest things we've ever done. What were we seeing? Was it Avengers? I think it might have been Avengers. We were seeing the first Avengers movie, and I had already seen it. Right. And I, be I begged it. them to see it. I was like, you guys gotta come. Yes, it's awesome. And I demanded you had to announce the popcorn somewhere, otherwise That we was the go. stipulation. Yeah. <laughs> well, you were ranting about how like all movies are like blockbusters and yes like, i was i was i was lamenting that good movies don't come out anymore yeah. this is 10 years ago now so we'll see where <laughs> see how things have progressed yeah um and i was saying that everything is just blockbuster garbage all and popcorn cgi it's the, popcorn it's the popcorn summer that's all that matters is eating yeah. popcorn in the summer and, and brian had to announce to no. the theater to the full theater that the popcorn summer has arrived you told them to do it yeah and the theater was packed and it was so douchey right. and i had to go ladies and gentlemen yeah, he got the popcorn in, summer up, has he, begun he to yeah. in front of the theater popcorn people. summer has begun <laughs> Woo! and people Nothing. like and the, one the guy one, goes like the one guy the like don't just shut the fuck up yeah. <laughs> no claps. Sit Nobody the fuck excited. Down. Some popcorn gets thrown at you. It was so uncomfortable. It was great. I, it was so funny. You guys were dying. Yeah, it was so. It's funny. one of the funniest things I ever saw. <laughs> and you were holding the popcorn. I had yeah, popcorn yeah. in my hand. Yeah. <laughs> popcorn summer has begun. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> that is the quintessential like New York bit. Like you say something in Manhattan and then somebody tells you to shut the fuck up. It happened to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's it in uh, coming to America? I was just thinking of the same scene. Yeah. Someone to kiss, no. someone to miss. <laughs> shut shut the, the fuck up, up buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that happened. Uh, do you have one, Steve? I don't have like a funny or sexual thing, but I do have a slight dangerous one. Okay. I've only had really good experiences in the theaters until I went to see Perks of a Wall. He saw Dark Knight and Aurora on opening <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> only good experiences. <laughs> I can do the voice. <laughs> that has to be one of the darkest jokes on the show. That, uh, <laughs> That's a dark one. That's a pretty dark one. Yeah. I went to see Perks of Being a Wallflower without with uh, Alex. Yeah. And What's that about? It's a 
teenage movie. It's a coming of it's age. Coming of age. She read the book. She's like, I want to see the movie I want with her. I was forced, okay. which is funny because I didn't get to finish it that time. The lights all go on. The alarm starts going off, and there was a fire in the theater. Oh man! And like one of the theaters burnt down, and I had to get. I had to leave, but they gave us free tickets to see it again. So I had to see the movie so twice. Someone yelled fire in a theater. No, it was a real fire. Like engines. But did, did you do it? I to the story. You should have did it. I should have. I didn't think about it. I just kind of like the lights went off. I'm like, what happened to the movie? And it's like, everybody, fire, get out. And I was like, oh, I guess we're leaving. Then I had to go back to you. You had the golden opportunity to yell to fire to be that in guy, the theater. and I didn't do it. <laughs> well, the fire wasn't in my theater. It was in like another theater. Every law professor <laughs> would have cited you <laughs> as for Jackie Ackover. I would have been the <laughs> guy. I would have been the guy, and it, I, it was a it was a mistake on my part. Now that I, I bring it up. Thank you for making me feel bad. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, well, I, I have one. Yeah, go one. ahead. So I don't know if I told this before, but when like we would go to the theater to see rated R movies at the old United Artists Showplace on Staten Island. Yes. That was that was my favorite theater growing up. It was connected to a bowling alley. It was the hot spot. It's I a great think. spot. Yeah, it was fun. So I used to go all the time. Uh, and when it was when one of the Matrix movies came out, they were rated R. And for some reason, with the Matrix in particular, they were really big on not like letting people into R-rated movies. I never like when I was that. when I was a teen, mm -hmm. and it was such like a big deal. And it was opening night, so you know they wanted to bust you. And I remember we managed to sneak in, and we got into the theater, and we had our tickets. And one of our friends had to urinate, and he went to the back of the theater because he didn't want to leave and try to yeah. make it back. And yeah. he pissed in the back corner of the theater, and you would just see a stream of urine going down the slope of the theater. <laughs> and he was made, it full? Was what? it crowded? Oh, yeah, yeah. If you were on the edge, yeah, like you just night. had piss running next to you. Can't imagine why they didn't let teenagers in. <laughs> well, he would have went to the bathroom probably, you know, if... He had a if better he was a chance. human being. Yeah, if he wasn't a degenerate fucking yeah. <laughs> asshole. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, ready for the second email? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Thank you, Ricardo. So this is his email. Yeah. Hi, Brian, Anthony, and Steve. I Hello. Want, I want you all to note who, uh, who, who got listed first. <laughs> I want my name to be Spaghetti. All right. <laughs> I have just listened to the latest episode of the Two Men No Hope podcast with Brian. Brian, you had such good advice and had the witty banner to go with it, too, just to give you a bit of feedback. He sent this in himself. <laughs> this, is, this is a suck fest. He sent it in himself. <laughs> look, look, the you guy is making account. great points. He's created a fake account. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> I just make sock accounts and email myself. Yeah. Brian, you are You're so patting yourself on the back. Brian, you are totally not fat. <laughs> <laughs> Even I wouldn't send that email. I'm not that delusional. Doesn't right. Clyde Frog call him fat? You <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to spend the week catching up with the back catalog of reviewing history as best I can. Cool. This is a good man. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I am liking what I'm hearing so far, guys. I am also a TESD listener, nice. as Jamie always mentioned them on his previous podcast. So I have a quick question on those guys. Mm. What's Brian Quinn like in real life? Is he as nice as he comes across? And I think you could take it from here. So I have met Brian on two occasions. <laughs> uh, the second one was the most obviously the most recent he shook my hand and he was a nice man the first one was a little different um i was going to see the film uh king kong versus skull, kong skull island yes me ties and, into the theater me then. and brian yeah it does yeah. me and brian went to go see kong and skull island in an empty movie theater um so i walk in and I sit down. I was getting snacks. Brian was getting popcorn because he needs his popcorn for the popcorn <laughs> summer. And uh, we came out of March. <laughs> and I heard when I sat down, I heard someone behind me, uh, like groan. And the whole theater is empty. Right. Yeah. You could have. It was a completely empty theater except for this one person. <laughs> um, and then Brian came in and sat down next to me, and the person behind us literally went, 
Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> no, he said, really? Yeah, he said, really? Yeah, he was annoyed. Yeah, like and a whole theater. <laughs> I turned around, and it was uh, Q. I turned around, like, oh, shit, it's Q. Yeah. <laughs> Move the fuck over, it. <laughs> you were just being an asshole. He was angry, yeah, that I was that I had decided of all spots to sit was right, right in front the of him. The only way it could have been funny yeah. <laughs> is if you went and sat right next to him. Yeah. <laughs> like in the whole empty theater. That is so funny. I didn't realize. I didn't. That's I didn't so even funny. notice that he was there. But after the movie, I spoke with him, and yes. like we walked out. We watched the post credits together. Yes. We were talking. He was very nice. He was a nice man. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Q, it, like in my personal interactions with him, he's always been cool. He's chill. Uh, I see him the least out of all of them, but mm -hmm. you know he's a totally chill guy. He's yeah. awesome. Same. Worked with him a few times. Um, I went to a few of his like openings for his uh, beer company, like the brewery when he opened it. I went to a couple of those. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah so flagship, right? Uh, R and H. Yeah, R and H. It was right. at one was at flagship. I met him in Manhattan once. Just small talk, chat. You know what's up. Anytime we see him here, he's very nice. It's so, a good beer. Yeah, he's, uh, it was. I think I don't know if they still. Uh, I think he closed he the company. It, yeah. closed I'm not sure though. Oh but, well. Uh, yeah, he's he's very nice. They're all nice. I, I don't think we've ever no. met someone who hasn't been kind to us. Except here. Jimmy the fucking hair. <laughs> oh, that guy. I mean, but when you're that, when you're like that <laughs> level of attractiveness, it makes sense. You know, like hot people could be I, mean. He's the feedback from him. He's beloved. How can you not love Jimmy? He's <laughs> he's a sweetheart. He's a nice guy. Did you see his body? <laughs> yes. All right, so he has more <laughs> questions. Is the Prussian skull at the new studio as I, as yeah. I always wanted to check it out? Mm -hmm. It is, and Crumpy is here, too. Yeah, they're both So like That's the elf the in the tank? That's the elf in the tank. They're, yeah. They're it, both wait, here. It, it, yeah, it is an elf. Yeah, we went through that. Yeah, yeah, you give it money. Yeah. Okay, and finally, what hooked you and the TSD guys up in the first place? That's a story. So... We must have told that one on here before, haven't we? I don't know. Probably. So I'll tell it real quick. Um, years ago, it was Halloween 2017. Might have been 16. No, it was 17. 17? Yeah, because it was my 30th birthday. We shot my 30th birthday. I'll yeah, never forget you're it. right, yeah. So Walt put out a tweet. Can anybody do green screen? Does anybody have experience? It was I, an SOS. It was an SOS. Yep. I had graduated film school like two weeks before, and me and Steve had... It dabbled with green screen, kind of like stuttering, some, John, stuttering John with stand up. Yeah, we've done <laughs> we did, uh, some tests and saw what worked and didn't. We we had a a basic understanding. We knew how to do yeah. it. Uh, like we're much better now, and we know tricks and stuff. Oh, but yeah. you know, we knew how to do it. I emailed back. I was like, I'm from Staten Island. I'm a fan. I'll be happy to do it. Uh, we came to the studio. We well at the at the time they were actually in the comic in shop. Red Bank. It was in Red Bank, yeah. and we measured everything. We did all that shit. We set oh, yeah. it up. And at the end of the day, we banged it out. We f we shot it October 20th, and we got them the finished product by October 26th. 29th. Or 26th. Yeah, so we We had seven days to finish a almost two-hour green screen video that we've never done. Like, at least the, the media has not been done before that. So. Would you say you were faking it till you made it with that one? No. I am always faking it till no, I made it. No, <laughs> usually I would uh, I would admit to that. We actually, we'd had a lot of practice sessions. We, by we, no we means did we say. We leading up to the shoot. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. By no means did we say, like, we're professionals. We're like, we can do it. Like, but that's we'll, it. We'll get it done. But we I have no credentials. In I'll this get situation. it done. I don't know no. if this is going to be, like, an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. And it's, it turns out it was uh, well received. It was well received. Yeah. We did it. Yeah, I watched it. It was pretty impressive. And then yeah. after that, they did the, you know, they started Patreon and they we had so much video them, content. Yeah. So you were their first video um, thing. I, I was, I, Patreon. I was the first green screen project, yeah. which really got the juices flowing for Patreon. Yeah. They had done other video projects and obviously they had comic book men. The TV I would show. say that's a pivotal moment in the history of their show. I think it is. I agree. Yeah. Wow, um, and you know it took a, that editing session was brutal for and me. Because, that was tough. Because of that, you know, we have a good relationship, and Walt's a sports fan, so me and him talk sports all the time, yeah. and we just gelled. And yeah. you know, he's a great dude, mm -hmm. and he lets us record here. And tell him, yeah. Steve, Dave is like the be one of the best things that ever happened to me. They're so, fucking yeah. awesome, yeah. and we do side. Still, we still get like. You do a lot. I still get side projects here. Yeah, here, things you know. pop up, you know, like, um, I don't know if we've ever said it, <laughs> but on Patreon, on the Tell em Steve Dave Patreon, there was a video. There's there's one where it was Third Eye Radio, mm -hmm. and Steve is actually in a mask I'm pantomiming. The oh, oh the, the puppet thing. No. Well, he was a puppet. I was a puppet. 
I was uh, Dave Windorf's puppet. I believe mm-hmm. that's his name, yeah, right? And, from Monster uh, Magic. Yeah, so I was pantomiming the puppet, but there's another episode of Third Eye Radio where there's somebody, it seems like uh, two aliens talking to each other, which is Walt and, and Dave, mm-hmm. and everyone thought it was Dave. It was actually me. So if you are a <laughs> Tell Him Steve Dave listener and didn't know who it was, because I think the credits, we just put like a fake We name. left it blank. We just left it blank. Uh-huh. Or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that was yeah. actually me pantomiming for, I think, uh. almost two and a half to three hours. <laughs> <laughs> which, ew, that, it was hot. That was so hot. It was like September <laughs> me, or Walt August. Walt and I were dying. <laughs> yeah. They looked like shit at the end. Yeah, we were just drenched in sweat, but it was fun. It was a good time. Okay, and then he wanted some advice. Sure. Okay. Um, we'll have Ant give the advice. I think Ant is a really good advice giver. Okay. He said, I, I, don't. I had been dating <laughs> in a relationship for the past eight years up to the end of February when suddenly... Eight years? Yeah, she broke yeah. it off with him. Mm-hmm. She gave him a flimsy excuse saying, we have just grown apart and I've been devastated ever since. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't know what I was doing wrong in the relationship to cause this. So a few days ago, I made the pretty poor judgment call to follow her back on social media under another account as she had me blocked just to be nosy and see what's been up with her. Mm. Well, her Facebook had no new posts, but her Instagram had lots of pictures of her and a guy looking very close going for dinner. It even looks like they did a spa day today in the previous week, just days after we split. So in my mind, she had been seeing this guy wall still with me and broke it off Ooh. to get with him properly. Yeah, probably. Would you come to the same conclusion? Yes. And what would you guys say should be my next action? How I are the gun advice. laws in the UK? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, eight I years... Advice. Listen, I think I, if she cheated on you, fuck her, dude. Don't, mm-hmm. don't, 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 don't go back. You lucked out. Don't go back. You yeah. lucked out. Yes. It is actually the best thing to happen it's to you. It's unforgivable. Yes. Yeah. Because here's the thing. Look, I think we're all in agreement at this table. She probably was cheating on him. Yes. So it seems like. Yeah, it seems like. So in this situation, you have enough evidence. By the way, unfollow her on all social media. Yeah. Don't, like, you need to erase her from your existence completely. Mm-hmm. Delete any trace that you were ever with her. Get mm-hmm. it out of your mind. And you need to move on. And yeah. you need to pick up some sort of hobby no. or thing to focus no. there's on. A, there's no. actually... Not hobby. I, I'm, I'm going dis, to disagree with Brian on this one. Okay. With what part? There was a lot there. Here's what, here's what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Do not delete her on all the social media and stuff. In fact, make sure that she... Be, if you got to make a fake account and befriend her, befriend her. But here's what you got to do. <laughs> Go fuck some chicks and take photos with the chicks and put them up and let her know that you're fucking doing that. You know, let her know that you are banging chicks. See, here's the thing. You are not hurting. You are you are the fucking man. You are the champ. No, but here's the thing. She doesn't care because she's. Yeah, she does. No, she has this. After guy. eight years, not she yet. cares. Not yet. She cares. It may, it may be, may, may, may be late at night. It may be when she's fucking. The pettiness fucking. isn't worth it. No, the pettiness is worth it. No, I think because you're both he wrong. he cannot give. She'll come back to him too. You can't give in to that. I think you're both. You got to be like, oh no, no, you could never take her back. Never take her back. No, no, no. I never think take her wrong. back. Yeah. Isolate from her right. completely and do your own thing yeah. and like That's find good. a new chick. I think the the best advice I could give here is is revenge. And the best revenge... You gotta keep it greasy with a family and friends. No, no, no. The best revenge (laughs) is success. Be better than what you were. Find someone better than her. That's what I just said. And that's it, yeah. That's the way you get oh, back yeah. at it. I mean, that's long. You don't need to unfollow. That's long run No, shit. you don't need because to unfollow. Here's the thing. Let her see the success. Here's the thing. Let's be real. The girl broke the guy's heart. But she's yeah. probably so on, she's he's probably only going to torture himself. He's miserable. He's only going to be yeah. torturing himself if he sees this shit. So what he has to do is just isolate it all She'll completely. probably cheat on that guy that's, or that guy's cheating on her already. That's so. how you make him feel better, but... That's not how you hurt her. You got to hurt her a little bit, too. Right? I said <laughs> it's how success. are the gun laws. No, no, no. no. It's, it's be better than what you were. Go find somebody who's better than her. That's it. That's that's You're going to hurt for a little bit, but you'll get over it. It's you'll a survive. shit situation. I don't think there's any winning move here. There is none. The only thing yeah. to do is no. just, Keep I lost this one. Keep going. Yeah. Yep. Regroup. Take it on the chin. Better yourself. Right. Move on. Yeah. And I think... Isolating and erasing her will do a lot. Start to go, that. go, go. Do like when he's a, had his fun. Go do some jujitsu. Oh. Get in shape. Find a five. Yeah, and go have fun with a five. Yeah, that's a good move too. <laughs> that's, a good move too. <laughs> that's it for our emails. So thank you. That for was our great. Emails. Yeah. If you want an email, you can email us at reviewinghistorypod at gmail.com. 
Now, believe it or not, we actually talk history on this show. Eventually. Yeah. yeah. yeah at some point. All right. So who's up what first? Is this? What is this? Pick episode what? This is XI, I think. So 11. I know. I, we, I think, are we at a year yet? What? Are we no. at a year of no, shows? Not yet. No, not yet. No. You'll know. Close. You'll know when. Okay. The moment will will dawn and you'll be like, yes, it's a year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just know. You'll know. <laughs> um, can I go first? I think I think I might have the weakest one, but it's it's kind of interesting. How will I know when I'm ready? When the time is right, you won't you have won't to. You won't have. I oh, fucked up know. the the you'll know. Matrix quote. Oh oh, by the time you're oh, are you saying when I'm ready, I could dodge bullets? No, Neo. I'm saying when you're ready, you, you won't, won't have, have to. to. Yeah, <laughs> that's up to you. Yeah, if you want to go first, you can. You can go first. Yeah. Steve. All right. Uh, I'm bringing a person, just like I normally do. Sadly, not no. Ah! Okay, it's not nautical themed, but it might have a little bit of water involved. It's I have shipping pirate. in mind, so we'll cover. Oh, good. Perfect. <laughs> okay. uh, thank God. I would have felt really bad if I didn't. Um, I am bringing Miss Audrey Munson. Have you ever heard of this person? No. You have seen this person more than you believe. More than you would believe. Audrey Munson? Is Audrey she like the... Audrey Munson, born, born 1891. Can I guess? The football coach at St. Joseph by the Sea High School was named Mr. Munson. Coach I don't Munson like, uh, was no, I don't think there's no, a direct relation right. to this person, but... Uh, <laughs> Hold Go on, ahead. wait. Yeah. Is this the woman who posed for the Statue of Liberty? It is heralded as the world's most famous model in the early 20th century. Am I right? Uh, I'm not sure if it was the Statue of Liberty, okay. but there's a good chance because, uh, it? yeah, it probably is. I, I honestly don't know, but because he said you've seen it more than you would think. Oh, uh, but you, even if it's not uh, for the Statue of Liberty, you still have. When was it? Did you this say? is 1891. That's in the that's in the right time period. It is the right time period, but uh, was not in France. Yeah, that that could have done. So it was she was uh, actually in New York. Okay. And uh, in fact, early twentieth century, posed for many sculptures and monuments. Okay. Um, but let's go into her life here. Yeah. Famous model. Um, she hot. She was okay. I'm looking now. I was thinking about this the other day. Yeah. Whenever you go far back. Have you ever looked at like a f- woman in like the 1920s or something in a photo and been like, that's a real hottie? I find it so rare. Occasionally. Sometimes it, it is rare. Yeah. There are, um, there's a, I've seen like restored photos. Like you never see like a black and white photo of like hot chicks. Yeah. But for some reason, like if they get restored, there's just something about that that makes it more real and more gooder. Yeah. Okay. You know I, what I mean? More good air. Yeah. <laughs> more goods. Yeah. So, Aud- Audrey Marie Munson, um, also known as the most famous art model in the world, nicknamed hmm. Miss Manhattan. Miss Manhattan. Miss Manhattan, born 1891. In relation to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> she in, loves uh, big blue dick. <laughs> born in Rochester, New York. Uh, her parents split at a young age, uh, and she was brought to Manhattan mm-hmm. to live in a boarding house. Now- her career kind of happened by accident. She was walking um, down a New York street and I believe, Bro- yeah, Broadway, down Broadway. And someone noticed how nice random her hands dude, were. Random dude <laughs> approaches her and was like, hey, uh, can I photograph you? All right. And she was just, she was creeped out. Like, uh, okay, I guess, you know, and he's just like taking pictures and he's obsessed with her. Photographs? Photographs, yeah. So really Probably early took on. an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. It's a, <laughs> He time. had to break the glass yeah. plates. <laughs> <laughs> and she, he, he, he was like, are you a model? And asking all these weird questions. And she's just like, no. If you come why, with me, hold why on. Why have photographers had the same tactic? Since the, the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's like public agent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I offer you 12,000 check corona. You no, show me your crazy. tits. <laughs> this gets really crazy because... She, he gets these pictures taken and wants to keep doing more photography sessions so much so that he starts introducing her to the art wor- and photography world. So if she's meeting photographers, mm-hmm. uh, painters, sculptors, specif- specifically, is the thing that uh, became famous for her. Uh, she met. She meets Isidore Conti, K-O-N-T-I, a famous sculptor. Oh. That name's familiar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is where her career takes off. So her clothes took off too. Yeah. In oh, yeah. fact, she is the first woman nude to be on the in a movie. Couch. In a oh, movie. Really? Oh, she's the first stag film. I thought first, I thought that was first he- nude he- woman. Hedy Lamar. First full nude woman. 
Headley? Not no, just topless, full nude. This is oh, okay. Yeah, Headley Hedy Lamar had a tits out. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. But I'll give you the year you know uh, the movie? later on. I'm I don't know. I thought you would know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, aren't you a film guy? You're the movie guy. <laughs> I don't I don't keep the uh, history of nudes in film in my head. Look up I'm Hedy, not Mr. Skin, dude. <laughs> look up Hedy Lamar. She invented radar. <laughs> that I knew. Yeah. Do you know, real quick, this is interesting. I had her granddaughter in my feature film, and Eddie we had Lamar? to cut the scenes. Why'd yeah. you have to cut the scenes? Did she have her tits out? Kind of. Wait, was this the one that was like the reporter? Yes. She was gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She hated you. <laughs> no, she liked me. She was not one of the ones that hated me. Oh. She, we actually got along well. Like, I drove her back to yeah. Manhattan. She does stand-up now, I think, in L.A. Really? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, I actually would love to get her on the show to talk. Like, I think she she's a really cool person. But why'd you uh, cut that? It just didn't fit. It didn't fit the movie, and it didn't come out as intended. Right. And in an amateur movie, that stuff ended up being the most amateur. Uh huh. So it just had to go. Yeah, it had like me making faces in the background or something, right? Yeah, it just didn't go as intended, you know. And like, it just had to die. But she is actually uh, Hedy Lamar's. Um, wow. Like granddaughter, yeah, great granddaughter. She went to the rap that. party. Yeah, she did. Yes, I remember that. Huh. Wow. Well, anyway, <laughs> Munson. Um, you can see Munson basically across the United States nationally, but the most sculptures you will see this person is in New York City, hence Miss New York. Some of the more famous ones that you will see, you've walked past them a million times. Do you know when you get off the South Ferry and there's a courthouse right there? Yeah, the homeless guy, he shits the there. The homeless guy shits there all the time. Homeless Bill. I think it might be a museum there. sometimes as well. Like this is indig- my toilet. <laughs> an indigenous museum. Right get there. out of my house. She's, <laughs> she's sitting right there. She's sitting right there. Wow. If you've ever been to the Met, there's a really cool sculpture of like death. She's the base of it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, she's all over the place. You could see... The sculpture. Oh, okay. She's insanely I will show, prolific. I will show. And I have it up. The pictures. Yeah. I will, yeah. Very prolific. Like she's everywhere. If you've ever seen a sculpture, did you know this chance. before the yeah, searching. No. Yeah. Where did you get all this no. info? I just I was looking for somebody cool, and I'm like, this is the person I found. Mm. Um, and she started silent films after this in 1915. In fact, right before that, what really also set her off. Uh, she was the model of choice for the Panama Pacific International Exposition. So all bunch of sculptors went there and just mm-hmm. sculpted, all her. sculpted her. They just sculpted her, and they were so these works were sent out all over the world. So she, she's everywhere. She loves just being nude. Being nude. Being nude. Yeah. Yeah. Is that why all like sculptures kind of look the same? Yes. Because it's, it's literally all the same, the woman. same person. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> how many nude women were posing for this in eight, late 1800s? Right. Very little. So 1915 rolls around, and she does silent film. She starred in four films, Inspiration, Purity, Girl O Dreams, wink, wink. <laughs> that's the fun one. And yeah. Heedless Moths. <laughs> the funny thing is, I'm looking now, that's the only one without a Wikipedia page. So it must be a lost film. Yeah, probably. Ah. Uh, she became the first woman in America to appear nude in a film in 1915. Wow. Very early. Look at my hairy mm-hmm. vagina. <laughs> <laughs> she was praised. It by looks newspapers. like the Kaiser's beard. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this. This is what they said about her: the transcendent embodiment of feminine grace and beauty. That's what she was. Wow. That's yeah. Is and that so much better than saying she's fucking hot? Right. She is. She <laughs> oh, is she's beauty. gorgeous. She is beauty. She's she grace. is grace. Everywhere you look, her you tits see in her your face. face. <laughs> I like yours better. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, after the silent films, it kind of went downhill for this lady. She hit the wall. Uh, <laughs> she turned 30. <laughs> no, it got worse than that. Uh, 1919, she was living in a boarding house, which belongs to a Dr. Walter. Wait, I want you to think about this statement. Yeah. She's a famous supermodel throughout well, the, the world. she's the first supermodel. She's the first, mm-hmm. but she's famous. She's in movies and stuff. Right. But only in four. She's living in a boarding house at the end of this. Yeah. What happened? Well, I don't. You're think also thinking that in those movies days, are yeah, right they don't now. make they don't make a lot movies, of money. It's 1915. Right? I don't but think there's such things as she's royalty. Not fam- she's not famous. She's she's the first supermodel. She has sculptures everywhere, but she's not getting paid a lot mm. per sculpture. She's getting paid to pose like once or twice. She right. couldn't get no man. Well, that's the th- here's the thing. 
<laughs> she was living with her mother in the boarding house, owned by Dr. Walter Keen Wilkins. Wilkins falls in love with Munson. Okay. okay. Wilkins decides the best way to get this woman <laughs> is to murder Take his wife. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait. <laughs> yes. Even though they've never really were involved romantically or socially. They never really spoke that much. So but he, she was so beautiful, he murders the wife. So he's going wife. by, like, King Henry rules. He straight <laughs> like, I got to kill my wife to get her. My wife must die. That's the Anne move. Boleyn. Wow. Sadly, Dr. Wilkins. Sadly, he's he convicted. need to rethink of, some things. Sadly, he's convicted of murder and uh, hangs himself. <laughs> what jury would try this man? How hot is she? <laughs> you know, like, when you see she pictures, like, it's not that crazy. Is she like Alexandra Daddario? I'd be like, look, he shouldn't have done it, but you know, we all she understand, was, Maybe right? she's the Daddario of this age. Am know? I gay? I don't know who that is. Yes. Yeah, you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> she, all right, do you know True Detective? Yes. You know the young chick who had giant tits and shoved them in like Woody Harrelson's face? Yeah, that's her. Okay. And She's Woody gorgeous. Harrelson's like eating his eating her ass. Yes. Yeah. I love that that whole show in the first season. It's like Woody Harrelson's just like, I'm gonna get like hot actresses, I'm just gonna <laughs> shove my face in their ass. That'd be great. Like it happens like multiple yeah. times, right? Yeah. It's good to be the king. <laughs> she left a bag. Left a bag. Or a line. She's got a bag. Or a line. <laughs> so this guy kills himself to escape the electric chair. Makes sense. Uh, no, it doesn't. He kills he didn't himself. Want to get shot. He didn't want to he's going to die anyway. But he, yeah, but he, he saw what that what fucking Thomas Edison did to that elephant. Yeah, yeah. You Here's what I want to know. <laughs> this is early, man. Here's what I want to know. What did he know about, <laughs> about Hillary Clinton? <laughs> <laughs> I was actually going to say, um, I was going to say Thomas Edison. He went to Edison Island. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Roosevelt Island. He went to Roosevelt Island. Roosevelt Island. Wilkinson didn't kill himself. Eleanor did it. <laughs> <laughs> what was Teddy's uh Ted Teddy Roosevelt's wife's name? Eh? I don't know. Oh, she died. She died before he was the president. Really? Yeah. Is he one of the few presidents to not have a wife in office? He may have remarried. Um actually he probably did. I'm not sure. Um, but I know his his first wife and his mother died on the same day, and he wrote in his diary, The light has gone out of my life. Yeah, that's fucking <laughs> And then he went to the West. He went to, like, South Dakota. That's so the light went out because he was so tired. <laughs> he killed two women. Yeah. That's a lot. That's Ow. why he invented electricity. Mm. Uh, <laughs> his first wife was Alice Hathaway Lee Roosevelt. She died after four years of marriage. Oh, my God. And then his next one was Edith Kermit oh, Harrow yes. Roosevelt. Yes, I did know that. That's her name. She died in 1919. Mm -hmm. Her last words were, Yay! <laughs> <laughs> you can't put Kermit in your name and, <laughs> and have that to, not happen. Yeah. She sounded on logs a lot. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Wow. The banjo. All right. Um well back to Munson. So this guy kills himself, and because of it, her career and reputation is like slandered. It's like this is why he She's a harlot, himself. a temptress. She's a harlot, a temptress, and nobody hires her. So the mother has to like do really like horrible work. I think at one point she was like a she can't stand do work. Her I'm too no, she hot. was working, <laughs> but nobody wanted to hire her because they were scared she was going to get them killed or arrested and all this. She, she and would only get their wives mind killed. You, <laughs> she was posing naked in movies before this was a thing, so she was seen oh, as evil. Wow. You know what I mean? The embodiment of lust. Yeah. Her mother was selling kitchenware door to door, and uh, in we smirch this family's name. Here's where it goes really bad. Okay, 1919, she loses her mind and tries to kill herself. Very sad. Uh, doesn't succeed, but because of this, so she was only capable of just being hot. That's it. She couldn't she even the, kill herself. The world's first supermodel. Uh -huh. that, this is like a cautionary tale, really. So what happens so now? To her? She's a spinster. This is what actually, like, shocked She's me. She's leaving guys after being with them for eight years. Uh, in 1922, <laughs> she tries to kill herself. Eight years later, her mental state is deteriorating, and her mother puts her in a home. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So she's a gone mad. A psychiatric hospital. She's gone mad. She's, she's insane. Mind you, this is the 1930s. So I'm wondering, is she's this- She's actually pretty young at this point. Is there something to the idea that the hotter the chick, the crazier she is? Yes. Well, I mean, she, was put in, she was yes. put in this home at 40 years old, right? This, is, this, this actually shocked me. 40 years old, 
She was in the psychiatric hospital until her death at 104. 104. So she was there <laughs> for like 60 something years. She could have went so back she's to our Titanic. Con- she's our contemporary? Like she lived while we were alive? Holy yeah. shit. She died in 1996. <laughs> wow. She was alive. Yeah. She could have went back to Titanic with Bill Paxton. Now, yes. <laughs> I found it. <laughs> the heart of the ocean in. They uh <laughs> they they did a nice uh, sign that we could actually go see. It's in New York. Um Harold is the world's most famous model in the early 20th century. Pulls from many sculptures you could see. I'll put it up on the screen. Munson. Yeah. Is that in Rochester? Because she was she was buried in an unmarked grave, her ashes. Oh, then, my God. Then they found out it's who n- she was. Wait, it's 1997. You couldn't do, yeah. like, a second of research? Well, they found out they found out who she was, and then they, they oh, gave her. Oh, They fixed up. that up. Yeah, they fucked that up pretty bad. It, it was really, it's really brutal, and it's sad, but you see her everywhere. You know? It's crazy. And I she imagine that could be more. quite maddening. I also found out something that was, that kind of... It opened a little bit conspiracy theory to me. Okay. Um, she would escape the psychiatric hospital and go to bars. She would just go out drinking and they would catch her and like have to bring her back and stuff. Silver alerts. Basically, yeah. Which I, I, which is to me is like how do you know enough to like find your way and go drinking and, and like do that do you still need to live in a home. Do you remember when Jack Nicholson broke all the guys out of the, the thing? And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. That was her. Like. They needed to go back, though. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. All right. She can go out for a drink or two, but you got to go. <laughs> Should Jack Nicholson have uh, escaped? Should he have escaped? Like, do you think What a was- sleepy fuck. He ruined everything. He, the chief, oh my God. No, you know? but like, all right. Jack- <laughs> that door, that stupid window was open all night, and dumbass took a nap. <laughs> No, what I'm saying is, do you think Jack Nicholson was capable of living in society in Cuckoo's Nest? Yeah, he was faking it. Obviously, but he wasn't a good person. Like, he was a criminal. Yeah, right? he's a criminal. Yeah. But he's but he didn't deserve what Nurse Ratchet did to him. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what's funny? And certainly, Billy, poor Billy Bibbit. Oh, uh, Billy Bibbit. Uh. <laughs> he deserved better. Raise your hand if you want to watch the World Series. Uh, Mac, Mac mentioned something about a World Series. I've never seen one of those. <laughs> <laughs> that movie's amazing. It's one of the now best. I want to watch ever. it. I want to watch it. <laughs> Chief, put your hand up. <laughs> the Chief. How strong is Chief? Juji Fruit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, he's he, superhuman. He fucking pulled that sink up. He's and superhuman. He, does he throw it through? He throws a, it through yeah. a, through a steel like gate. Yeah. He has yeah. like Hulk like strength. He's, he's like the, the chief. strongest man ever. Yeah. 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 But yeah, that's uh, that Danny was my DeVito story. Of, the best. That was, the that was the story of Audrey Munson. Uh, that's the reason why you see tits in film nowadays and nudity, and you love them. And that's also yeah. why you get amazing sculptures and works of art. It's her She's the first supermodel. You know what's funny? Horrible end. There have been other famous models and stuff, her work will last longer probably. Forever. Because it's in stone. It's It'll in stone. Forever, it's dude. forever. It's going right. to be preserved. It's it. Her portrait and her body and frame is legit in some of the most important places in New York City. Wow. She's not shaved, though. Like, <laughs> oh, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> she, she might have been. She might have been. <laughs> but I, I saw a quick clip of the uh, the nude one, the nude scene. And uh, there, it's it. nothing special. No, no, you didn't like it's it. Not, it's nothing crazy. I think the sculptures make make her look a lot better than she really was, which makes no sense. Maybe she was. Maybe she was a floozy. She's a photo face. <laughs> Is she a Who butter knows? face, Steve? Huh? Is she a butter face? Well, do you want to see a picture of her? Yeah, I, I think. Um, I, I think we. I maybe. think we earned that. I think yeah. we deserve to I see. Think a photo Is her nude lady, scenes yeah. on YouTube? Uh, you might be able to find them. She's a pretty woman. She's pretty, but I don't do, think do, that's do, a supermodel. Do, 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 do. Sure it is. You know, I'll show the... the uh, Look, they didn't the invent camera. conditioner yet, but fucking... <laughs> she's soap was she's brand not. new. Yeah. I, I, how about uh, one more? We'll do one more. There's no deodorant. Everybody must have smelled so bad, like pre-1970. <laughs> what, what do you, do you got? More? What do you got? That's not her best picture. No. She's okay. She's okay. Yeah. Is she the fucking... Uh, the the par- is it Paramount? Not oh, Paramount. Columbia. Columbia. She's no. not Columbia. No, that's okay. her. Wow. Yeah. There's some really like I, I've seen her all over the place, and I highly recommend if you live, especially if you live in New York City, look her up. Look up the sculptures that she 
was based off she of. She is the Columbia tri- Triumphant in uh, New York. Mm-hmm. Like the gold statue, you've right. seen it. Yeah. That's her, but she's not, you know, the logo. Mm-hmm. All yeah. right, what do you got, It? What do I got? Um, I decided to talk about Eric the Red and the Greenland colony. Oh, did I ever tell you about Blue Land? Blue Land? Blue yeah, Land? everyone is blue there. I have a blue house and a blue window. Really? Oh, they made a song about that. Yeah. 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 Um, blue, da ba yeah. dee da Have you guys heard the new remix of that? Isn't it like always remixed? Someone took that song and put new lyrics to it. Oh, How really? would you do that? Like for the Zoomers. What oh, are they? Oh, no, not the Zoomers. They're like, I'm having the time of my life instead of I'm blue, I would dee, I would die. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's so terrible. So they mix like two songs? It's like you've run out of ideas when you're doing oh, I'm blue. I've seen that. Yes, it's having I'm good. The time of my By life. By BB Rexa, fellow Staten Islander. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Cottonville High School graduate. All mm-hmm. roads lead back to Staten Island. Yeah. I'm good, yeah, I'm feeling all right, yeah. baby. I'm going to have the best fucking night of my life. Ugh. Yeah, okay. You just made me want to quit life. Yeah. I've heard this. You've, they've run out of ideas. They're doing yeah, on blue. Just, well, yeah. dude, the song is 30 years old. It's like when people in the 90s would sample 60s shit. But it's not sampling 60s shit. It's straight up just stealing the vocal line and song. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the same song. Yeah. <laughs> it's a reimagining. Right? It's a reimagining. It's not though. It's, it's just slightly. it's sheer it's just changing the lyrics. <laughs> this is Led Zeppelin levels of thievery. <laughs> yeah, they were bad. Which I think uh, maybe one day we can do that. Like just how brutal Led Zeppelin were thieves. Were they? They used to yeah, yeah, do. yeah. They're like really bad with it. I mean, I don't know the the particulars of it, but they would just like rip off other bands, like the blues shit, constantly. The blues yeah. shit, yes, yeah. and like Stairway to Heaven is like a forgery. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what, though? They shouldn't have It's a damn good forgery. Yeah, I mean, who would you rather hear do it? Fucking muddy asshole from the Delta or Zeppelin? Zeppelin. (laughs) Muddy asshole. They're like, this is good, (laughs) but you are incapable of playing it. It's it's like, here is a badass rock band making this song amazing, and then there's like some guy from 1903 going, I'm down in the blue. (laughs) It's bad recording. I love your rendition. <laughs> I like you could kind of hear the notes, right. but it's mostly just right <laughs> with, with a horrible, like, not real microphone. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even a microphone. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to talk about Eric the Red now. Sweet. Uh, you guys, what about Johnny the Blue? <laughs> Who's Johnny the Blue? <laughs> you just did blue. He sucks a lot of dick. <laughs> good save. That didn't go where you thought it was going. Good save. It was a good save. He After he passed through town, they're like, Johnny the Blue is. Is there any there. better saves than dick jokes? I don't think so. No. That they're that's the, the, it's go-to. a go to. Mm-hmm. All right. What do you got about Eric the Red? Uh, you guys have heard of Eric the Red, right? I have, yes. Know. Yes. He's got a famous son. Who's Eric son? the Red or Leif Leaf Erickson? Leif Erickson. Leif is his Sp- son. SpongeBob famously celebrates his birthday. Mm-hmm. SpongeBob? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Happy Leif Erickson yep. Day. Oh, he I didn't know that. Yeah, he yeah, makes a big thing of it. Well, we're all about learning on this show, and now you learn. Now something. I've learned about but Tell me about Eric the Red. Tell me about Greenland. Tell me about that. I will. Do you consider it an island or a continent? I consider it ah. the 52nd state. <laughs> it's, an, it's an island. It's the world's it's largest It's an island, island country, yeah, but you could argue. It's not a country, really. It's owned kind by of. the Danes. Denmark yeah. owns Greenland. Yeah. They're going to sell it to us. Hopefully. <laughs> At a cheap price. Um, so Eric Thorvald's son. going to pay for it. Because that was what he was known as first. Thorvald's son. Thorvald's son? Yes, the son of Thorvald. Thorvald. Th- he was born in 950 in Norway. Okay. And at some point, how do they know the time? That's so specific. Because they wrote down this thing called the Greenland sagas. Which no, is but like nine fifty. That's such a specific time of the day. Not like nine forty five, nine fifty five, nine fifty. God damn it! All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> God damn it! That was that. Well, some that point so early much. in his life, uh, <laughs> Thorvald, Eric's father, uh, got himself involved in some kind of blood feud. Okay, and was forced to flee Norway. He got in um, one little fight, uh-huh. and they got scared. And said, you're moving all the way to Iceland to get away from everyone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so they crossed the sea, and they moved to Iceland. Iceland's How great. come he don't want me, man? 
<laughs> but he did it in a Viking way. How oh, come he don't want me, man? <laughs> yeah, no emotion, just deadpan. Yeah. 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 They don't plunges, hug, he just shakes And then his head. plunges an axe into someone's yeah. skull. <laughs> um, so they go and they're, they're living in uh, the shitty part of Iceland. Okay. There's a good part? Yes. Um, Iceland at this time has been colonized for a little for a little bit of time by the Vikings. Point. Yeah, and they're through overgrazing and shit. The land is starting to get kind of deteriorated, um, and they're in the like worst part of it. They're poor, uh, but Eric, young man, meets a nice young lady, and her father's rich and owns like most of the land on Iceland. Okay, wow. So they get married, and he gets himself a nice little homestead in a place called, like, the Valley of the Hawks. Awesome name. Yeah. We need more names like that. Um, they start farming. They're doing all right for themselves. They got a couple of thralls. Thralls are slaves. Oh, good times all around. What? Where are the slaves descended from? Just, like, native, like, Icelandic peoples? No, no. there are no native Icelandic peoples. Yeah. Oh, so I, no one was I, living there. Yeah, the, the Vikings The Vikings were the first slaves. human beings on Iceland. Okay. Viking, Vikings don't just take, like, so they materials. Took, like, they take slaves. They're, they're like, ra- you know, the Vikings are doing raids. Yeah. They're probably, like, British people that, or, yeah. Yeah. or some Frenchmen. Yeah. And they've been brought to the north to live as thralls, mm-hmm. right? So something happens where one of his thralls causes an avalanche. Oh, shit. And it ends up damaging his neighbor's house. An oh. avalanche? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck was Some, the guy doing? Like, walking. <laughs> probably yodeling. <laughs> what a fuck up. Oh. That is a big fuck up. <laughs> walking, walking around on a mountaintop yeah. yelling. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Drops like one log and just yeah. takes out half a village. <laughs> like, oh, my God. So he damages this guy's house, and in a uh, fit of rage, the guy whose house got damaged, he kills the thrall. He kills the slave. Kills the slave. Yeah. You got to understand, these slaves are thought of as property. property. property they're they're yeah. nothing. It'd be like right. if I went to your right. house and killed your pet. Right. right. Or killed his slave. Eric gets <laughs> mad. <laughs> I don't have any slaves. <laughs> Eric gets mad at this. You don't say. <laughs> and goes and murders his neighbor. Rightfully so. And the well, the Vikings look at this as like murdering your neighbor over him like keying your car. You know? Uh, again, I'm on, <laughs> I'm on this guy's side. So they exile him. <laughs> they exile him to a place called Oxney, which is a tiny island off the coast of Iceland. Okay. So he's starting another life again now in this third part of the world, right? This guy's like, everybody hates me. <laughs> he's got like this tool. Right, that has like rune carves in it, and like it's considered like magical and sacred. Okay. It's a valuable thing. He loans it to his neighbor on this island, <laughs> and the guy is like, "I'm not giving it back to you." So Eric murders him <laughs> and his oh, sons. Ken, I'm on this. I'm on this guy's side. Wait, he killed his sons too. Yeah. <laughs> So now he's got to leave. Yo, again. you got to kill the whole family tree, or else yeah, they'll want they'll come out for revenge. I know. Have, I have you ever uh, borrowed something from someone and not given it back? I have like a collection of Super Nintendo games yeah. that were gotten by borrowing from little kids in the neighborhood and not returning. <laughs> little kid bartering, <laughs> bartering as a child is hysterical. You always get like crazy nonsense. So um, I've been playing Donkey Kong Country three for decades with someone, else. <laughs> someone else's game. Yeah. Imagine that dude showed up and was like, "Can I have this back?" Or I'm going to kill you. It's funny you say that. We have a mutual friend. His name is Mike. He let me borrow uh, Conqueror's Bad Fur Day. Great okay. game. Probably around 1999, 2000. Okay. I've had it for over 20 years. <laughs> he called me up like last year. And asked for it back, and I had to give it back. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> that makes me so happy. <laughs> you gave it to him? I was years. so mad. That's so good. I was so That's mad. because so, And I had it. no right to be mad. Or I, had, I never liked to stand. You're not going to play it. But I was like, it. it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> I've had it so It was never yours. <laughs> You're the guy who gets killed for stealing right. the rune. <laughs> he called me up, and he's like, I'm coming over, and I'm getting that. Mike should have just walked in and killed you and everyone and else. I, and then he sold it. <laughs> He yeah, sold. <laughs> Mike is he a comedic genius. He's hilarious because he knew what he, he was doing. It. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um. So, while all this is happening on these islands, right? Yeah. Uh, he hears a story of a guy. Uh, I have his name written down. Hold on. 
Doesn't matter. Okay. Um, uh, like a Norse fisherman guy. Okay. Who got blown off course in a rainstorm and saw what looked like land far to the west. Mm-hmm. So he's like, this sounds like an opportunity. And I've been exiled from everywhere I have nowhere I've ever else been. to go. <laughs> so him and his family, they get on a boat, and they're like, we're sailing west. We're going to see what the fuck's out there. So they sail 700 miles they off, fell like, over open water. They fell off the cliff of the earth then, right? <laughs> they did not fall off the cliff of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> and they are the first, uh, well, not, I guess, second Europeans to ever see Iceland. And what they Greenland. Reali- Greenland. Oh. Greenland, sorry. I oh, gotcha. Greenland is, at least on its east coast, is nothing but a giant ice sheet. Yeah. So they actually follow the coastline south and came around to the west end. On the west end, there's about 350 square miles of habitable land, like good for farming, and it's a good place for a colony. Wow. So they're like, jackpot. This is it. This is it. Wow. So he gets he goes back to Iceland, and he starts rounding up people for a colony. Now, remember I told you that Iceland was kind of, this was a bad time Yeah, it wasn't them. doing good. Yeah, so there were enough people that were desperate enough to throw down everything. Die, like, fuck it. And go with him. Let's yeah. go with this guy. We just better not and they, fuck he up. He gets like yeah. 400 men, well, families, mm-hmm. to go and colonize Greenland. So he sets up this colony. Are they aware of how cold it's going to get? <laughs> well, uh, you know, it's funny <laughs> you mention that. This is actually what's known as the medieval warm period. Have you ever heard of that? No, not really, but I can figure out what it is. Well, it's a period in Earth's history that actually was warmer than it is today for a lar- large period of time. Al Gore would be very upset. This oh, is yeah. stuff that they don't want you to know about. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a time not that long ago in the grand scheme of things where the Earth was actually slightly warmer than it is right now. Um, this was followed up by something called the Little Ice Age. And then there yep. was global cooling, you know. Um, yep. It, goes, it fluctuates yeah. naturally. Uh, so it was actually a good time to be in the north. Okay. And they start a pretty successful colony that lasts a couple hundred years. So here's here's, wow. what, here's what goes down. Uh, Eric becomes, you know, king shit I'm, on, in Greenland. I'm the ruler, yeah. Yes. But he is completely dependent on what's happening in Norway which is obviously thousands mm-hmm. of miles away, because their main thing that they do is they export ivory from walruses. Really? Yeah. So they, I guess that's valuable. Yeah. They hunt the walruses and sell the ivory, and it's like their trade. Well, they use it as oil, right? Like oil lamps, it's usually... No, yeah. ivory is like the tusks. You know, uh, they're like a valuable commodity. Yeah, but I thought they like they extract like the oil from that. I'm sure they use stuff they like that. They take that from the blubber. They, yeah, they hunted the a lot of seals. The blubber, yeah. I, there was one thing I, I was uh, looking up about this. They said that they realized there were um, this one type of seal that were very abundant, but they could, but they didn't hunt them. They were smart enough to not hunt them because they realized they'd hunt them to extinction. Oh. But there was this other species of seal called the harp seal. That were way more of them. There was no chance of that, so they exclusively would hunt those and eat them. That's and they'd smart. leave the other seals alone and mm-hmm. let them build up. Yeah, um, conservation, early conservation. Right. That's good. So we he sends care Leaf about the planet. <laughs> <laughs> he sends Leaf, his son, back to Norway to like strike deals with the king in Go Norway barter. and stuff. Right, and the new king of Norway is a Christian, newly converted. Well, he so he gets back and he's like. When the hell did this happen? Yeah. There's just a <laughs> monumental church. He's like David's Back to the Future. <laughs> so um, when Leif returns to Greenland, he brings with him a priest because the king of Norway has demanded that the colony be converted. So Eric does not like this. And they say he, before he died, he was like the last guy to convert. Okay. Um, and he, he like didn't really. He never really he like, did it in name. Believed in it. Uh, Leif Erikson will go on his epic journey to Vinland, which is Canada, um, before his father died. And he actually wanted his father to go with him, but he was too old and didn't, didn't take weak. the trip. The Greenland colony, now this is, this is interesting. It lasts until like the 1420s, 1430s. So it's got a good 400 years of life run. in it. In that time, the Little Ice Age will start. Things start to get cold. Bad time to be in Greenland. Yeah. <laughs> um... It vanishes. We don't know what happened. They just lose contact with it one day. 
Um, some people say that they moved west, that they, you know, fell in with the Inuit who were in the area. Um, some people say they just died off. Uh, there are records of like church services happening up to a certain point and then they just stopped. The last thing that ever happened, like that we know about is a wedding that happened. Yeah. On the Island. Um, but I heard this story and I thought it was pretty cool. So in 1540, this is a hun- over 100 years after the colony has been gone, that they've lost contact with it. Uh, a ship, a Norwegian ship heading for Iceland gets caught in a storm, just like what happened yeah. with the fishermen earlier. And they get blown and blown and blown, <laughs> just coming all sore. over the place. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell were you expecting saying something like that? He knew what he was doing. <laughs> they find shelter finally, way off course, in Greenland. Okay. Uh, they end up on this beach. With and they have to watch dicks. the Gerard Butler movie, <laughs> Greenland. Um, that's Gerard a movie? movie? <laughs> yeah, it came out like last year. I think it's like like the world is ending for some bullshit. It's mm-hmm. like um, one of those Roland Emmerich movies. <laughs> oh, like Independence Day? Yeah, shit like that. Like the world is oh, ending. Yeah, Independence What's Day that too. movie? Uh, 12 Days, 2012. I was going to oh, say 12 yeah, Days yeah, of Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the tonic plates are all fucking yeah, yeah. crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, this ship, it ends up in Greenland. And they while they're sitting in, like, this cove, they see on the beach a dead man. Greenland, real quick, is about a comet coming towards Earth. And it's going to hit it and destroy the planet. And I'm assuming it's that, gonna hit Greenland? that the planet, that the asteroid is the size of Greenland. <laughs> ah, that's pretty big. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, Makes sense. So they see this dead guy on the beach, and they go and investigate him, and he's clad in seal skin. And they assume that he's one of the local Eskimo Inuit guys. But they flip him over, and You know who else loves seal skin? Who? Heidi Klum. Because she was married to him for a while. Mm. (laughs) She loves seal skin. Baby! She was kissed by a rose on the grave, really. (laughs) And did you know when it snowed? Did you ever see pictures of, like, seal clubbing? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, he's. Yeah. <laughs> vi- it looks violently fun. <laughs> <laughs> they flip him over. He's got red hair, and he's a white guy. And they're like, "What?" And they're like, "What the fuck? Yeah. He shouldn't exist." Yeah. So he was. He was one of them. He's a Norseman. So there may have been something still happening mm-hmm. long after they lost contact. And that is the Greenland colony. Wow. wow. Yes. What What do you think happened? What do you personally think happened? I think the people, I, I think overwhelmingly most of them must have just abandoned it and moved elsewhere. Mm. Um, and there was probably like a few people still living like because they didn't want to leave for, for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And they just died out. Were there any know? like remains found? There's ruins. There's, there's like ruins, a, there's, right. the town is there. You know, mul- there was. I think there was two different settlements. There's all that remains. Yeah, yeah. there's the band. Yeah, there's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how did people get back to Greenland? They sail. You know, they have no, Vikings. Like, they got long no. ships. But that I'm talking about after this, like because we know Greenland, like people live there now. Oh, uh, the da- the Danish government like went there and. Claimed it. They're like, this is ours. Yeah. We colonized it. Because, you know, it's all mm-hmm. tied clogs with and their stuff. people. Yeah. And they, today, almost no, like, Danes live there. It's almost entirely populated by, like, the local Inuits. Did you ever um, see those blonde but they are, people? No. no. Are they Vikings descendants? No, they're, like, light-haired Inuits. Like, they're, like, really... Are you talking about the, um... Are they, like, good The looking? Sami? Yes, yes, yes. That's what oh, I'm thinking. Oh yeah, of. I've seen Aren't Sammy. they Greenland? No, they're in Scandinavia. Oh, okay. I got it. I'm sorry. I messed the up. Sami live in the extreme north of like Norway, Sweden, Finland, Russia. Mm-hmm. And they are a weird like they 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 look very Native American. They got but yeah. they are Europeans. They got good folk music. Yeah. They're really interesting. Very yeah. very strange people, yeah. yeah. Would you live amongst the Sami if you could? I've seen some of the Sammy women. I'm gonna say some of them are yes. hot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Being a Sammy don't look that bad. You also like the cold, so you. There you is fit right a in. um. There's a movie uh, that Olver did the soundtrack for uh-huh. the band. Yes, Olver yeah. is a experimental yeah. 
slash Nobody, black metal. Not slash. many people know this. If you do watch you, The Sopranos, do you still consider you know. them a black metal band? For three albums, they were. That's okay. it. Their first three albums, they were a black metal band. That's what they're most famous for. Experimental but ever band. since then, they've been interesting experimental music. Yeah, The Sopranos. <laughs> they, they are, their poster is featured in Metal <laughs> Sopranos, Sopranos bedroom. Yeah. Why do you think they put that there? I think whoever was writing Cast for the member. show yeah. loved Ulver and put up Nat's yep. Magical Just on the wall. Black metal dude like, um, writing or working on put the Put that show. up on the screen. It doesn't, oh, yeah. Yeah. it doesn't fit. No, Meadow character. would never be no. listening to Ulver. It doesn't fit with <laughs> the <laughs> other <laughs> posters. Could you imagine if they had on the show like one scene? <laughs> Meadow. Meadow. Meadow was listening to Nat's Ma Matt Magical, for anyone who doesn't know, is one of the most brutal albums ever made. I I own it. I love the band. Wasn't it like I have only listened to that album one time because it's too brutal and I don't like it. Isn't it just people screaming in the woods? Yes. Huh. They recorded it on the worst possible recording equipment yeah. ever in the woods. Yeah. It sounds horrendous. Yeah. But it is the most true black metal there metal is. Metal Soprano <laughs> being like, point. like all like Italian. She's like, I love fucking black metal. Battles in the North, immortal. So let's go a little, <laughs> let's go a little uh, black metal nerdy here. Yeah, for a, for sure. a quick moment, not not too long. Okay, but I listened to uh, Mayhem. Right, which is you could also say like legendary stuff. Legendary. Yes, that I want to do a movie with them. Oh, oh we could definitely yeah, do it. Do There's that. like two movies out yeah. for them. Um. But it's traditional. It is the most brutal black yeah. metal. Made by murderers. The over, <laughs> made by murderers. Oh, the <laughs> over black metal is more brutal than that. I think so. I'm giving you a that guarantee. That particular album. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So if for those of you who uh, may not know Over but Mayhem, it's more brutal than that. Um, <laughs> Shadows in the Sun is a good like non-black metal Over album. Yeah. Shadows, Shadows in the Sun is amazing. Yeah. 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 Really but that's, yeah, that's so far removed from I know, what I we're know. talking about. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, anyway. What the whole point I brought up over was they did the soundtrack for a movie called Svetnigar, which is a <laughs> movie about a black kid in Norway who goes and lives among the Sami. Really? Wow. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That sounds cool. Yeah. You saw the movie? I've seen clips of it. I have the soundtrack. I want to watch soundtrack's the amazing. I wonder if it's uh, <laughs> based on a real story. Wildcat. Play it, guys. Is it based on a real story? I don't think so. It might uh, be. I don't know. Maybe. If it is. If it is, we can do it on the yeah. show. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> might be the lowest viewed one we yeah. do. <laughs> For some reason, we're really popular in Norway this week. <laughs> they did another soundtrack called Riverhead. Well, don't the Dutch love us? So, uh, yeah, we're not big too far in, off. We're big in Amsterdam. Mm. We're good. Yeah, people love us there. Amsterdam. <laughs> I'm, I'm New York. York. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my pick. All what right. You got pretty brain. Cool. I got one of my favorite incidents in American history. Oh, American history? Oh, yeah. So we're talking okay. about the pig war, aren't we? How'd you know? Because I know you love the pig war. I love the pig war. <laughs> I think I teased it before. Do you know about the pig war? Uh, refresh my memory. All right. So the pig war is yeah. basically to get the exact location mm -hmm. um, in between what Kermit had to do to get Miss Piggy. <laughs> yes. Right, yes, get a yes. fight through <laughs> hordes of <laughs> <laughs> They sang about it in Black Sabbath. Uh -huh. mm. Bang. <laughs> War pigs. <laughs> All right. So this is still when Canada was a piece of the British Empire, right? I thought you were gonna say piece of trash. <laughs> This is when Canada was still a piece of trash. <laughs> so they were part of the British they're, Empire? They are part of the British Empire. So this is like, what, 70? I mean, as, as, er, as far back as 1960. This is, 18, uh. <laughs> this is 1859. Okay. All right. 18. So on 1859, we're far west, right? So we have Washington State, and then we have the Vancouver Islands. Mm -hmm. And there's this one spot in the middle called the San Juan Islands. Right. Okay. And it's it's kind of in the middle of both territories. And, it, you know, it's like a little dispute, but it's nothing too crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's ambiguous, but they're like these are meaningless islands. Right. Who gives a shit? Like, we don't need to go crazy about this. Mm. We'll keep it some people would say that about the Falcons. <laughs> oh, Maggie. <laughs> Maggie, what have you done? <laughs> that whiny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So eventually they came to a treaty where they're like, you know, you we have to be able to pass through these islands undetected. Mm -hmm. We'll keep everything peaceful, right? So there's yeah. people living around there, but there's no big colonies or anything, right? right. Okay. It's also the frontier. 
Yeah, it's yeah, wild like, shit. Yeah. So they're kind of neighbors, but not really. You're so far removed from, from everything. civilization. Your next neighbor right, right. is like a mile away. <laughs> so they did these treaties w- way earlier. So now we get to 1859. June 15th, 1859, right? Okay. And there's ambiguity. Ambiguity. Am- ambiguity. 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 What do I? What? You're saying ambiguity. Yeah, You're ambiguity. just putting the wrong emphasis yes. on the word. It's ambiguity. 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 Yeah. There you go. Here on Reviewing History, we teach history, <laughs> phonics, <laughs> grammar. <laughs> we did spelling. <laughs> we're, we're all over the place. All right. So this dude, uh, Lyman Coltar. Not of the Deepers. Coltar. Whoa, Coltar of the Deepers, Whoa. amazing Japanese yeah. avant-garde band. I love wow, we're going like, real <laughs> weird with this, man. The last 10 minutes, we're showing like our We're music. showing our hands. <laughs> yeah. We're showing our hands here with the, the musical taste. Check out New Wave, guys. Incredible we were wow. gatekeepers with that for quite some time. And I guess welcome to we're the party. We're letting it all fly out. Oh, yeah. Like we knew, we let everyone know we were pompous assholes when we shot on Bruce Springsteen. Now you know why. But now we're like, yeah, I like Oliver and Coltar of the Deepers. You guys have probably never heard. You've probably of that. never heard. Of <laughs> Only like a couple of people heard of these bands. They're like, you know, they're probably not for you. No. <laughs> In fact, I know they're not because it's so black metal and dark. <laughs> it's brutal. You can't even understand what they're saying. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> so there's an American farmer who yeah. lives on one of these islands, right? And he's like, I'm allowed to live here, you know, under this specific act and blah, blah, blah. Because he, fuck Canada. Yeah. He <laughs> finds a pig in his garden. Mm-hmm. He's like, well, this pig is in my garden. It's bacon. <laughs> I got to take it. It sounds like a Genesis it. lyric. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Let's keep going. A <laughs> flower? <laughs> bam, 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 bam. The pig is in the garden now. <laughs> There's Abraham Lincoln dressed in drag. <laughs> Used to be an American flag. <laughs> <laughs> I right, hope so there's some like brutal Some prog guy is just it. like Someone's Fuck yeah, supper <laughs> is ready <laughs> <laughs> So your brother's listening to the show <laughs> <laughs> Supper is ready <laughs> So he sees this pig He's got to take it out He right? takes it out yeah. you know. that's, that's food That's food for you Unfortunately for him the oh. pig was actually owned by... The frog was a prince! <laughs> <laughs> the prince was a brick! Fly away, little bird, and a hat on your tail! What have you heard? <laughs> I'm changing to a human being! I'm sorry, whoever's listening and doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> All right, just sorry. listen to Supper Trading by <laughs> you got a lot of listening to do By the way, it's a 20-minute song, so get <laughs> fucking ready. <laughs> I love, though, whenever me and you, because we used to go to Canada all the time, yeah. we would always hit a point where, like, it's Throw Supper's, Supper's ready, ready time. On. We got to play it. And we just listen to <laughs> Supper's Ready. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> anyway, right. so they take out the pig and it's owned by... An Irishman who also lives on the island, okay. right? Mm-hmm. The guy is like, yo. You killed my pig. That's my pig. And <laughs> Coltar is like, you know, I'll give you some money. And the guy's like, no, that's not enough. I want 10 times what my pig costs. So he wants 10 pigs for one death? Basically for the hassle, I guess. Because, you know, it's a lot to get a new pig, probably. Okay. I guess. I don't you know? know. I don't know. I don't Basically, think- Coltar's like, I'll give you 10 bucks, which is equal to $300. That's huge. That's a good deal. Right? Yeah. And the guy's like, no, I want $100, which is equal to 3000 No, that's insane. Yeah, that's, that's too much. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't know how much a pig is, but I don't think it's $3,000. Yeah. I guess, though, when you factor in that they have to get it from sea, Lug it, yeah. it probably is a bit of a hassle. Mm. But It's not a $3,000 hassle. Yeah, no. It might not- be. Depending- Let's say they got to get it from, like, Really far. It's like pigs. Two somebody, away. There's got to be somebody nearby that has a pig. Maybe I don't know. You know what? <laughs> I, I can give a a, a good example. Um, we know somebody who was running and operating an animal rescue service, and sometimes what would happen is they need drivers, and they'll be like, "We'll give you four hundred dollars to just drive and pick up the puppy and bring it back." So four hundred dollars plus the cost of the puppy would probably be like another. Who do they get? John Wick. Thousand dollars. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like. <laughs> <laughs> For one small puppy, imagine a pig that actually requires like weight, and on top of that, you don't have like a car. You have to be, like fucking wagon and shit. I need I'm God. driving these hogs across know, the prairie. <laughs> Three thousand might be a legit. Three thousand might be a legit price, and it's dangerous. You know. Uh, All right. Who knows? I don't buy it. So, <laughs> the guy is like, "Fuck you! You're a pig fucker." <laughs> I'm not paying. What do you mean? You fuck pigs. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm not paying for your fucking pig. Right. Yeah. And the guy is like, 
I was just eating bacon. I ain't paying for the fucking. Yeah. <laughs> the guy's like, oh, yeah? So he goes to the British, and the British are like. The government. Yeah. He goes to the magistrate. He's the like, Brits. the guy killed my the pig. Redcoats. And he's not like. This fucking yank killed well, he's, me he's pig. He's Irish. Oh. Oh. This fucking yank he killed my pig. <laughs> he killed my pig. <laughs> and they're like, we want to arrest Coltar. And send him deep. <laughs> you can't hear that name, right? Yeah, it's just every time yeah. I'm just thinking what's, about what's the other part of the name. Say fucking the name. break stroke. Uh, his first name is Lyman. That's Lyman not much better. <laughs> That's not much better. Can we call him Lie? Lie. Lie. Yeah. So the British authorities are like, we're gonna arrest Coltar, mm-hmm. <laughs> and the Americans. Whole band. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's jabs all confused. It's like a Scooby Doo thing. <laughs> they were a samurai at this point, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like six samurai. <laughs> I will tell you not how we died, but how we rocked. <laughs> so eventually the Americans are like, fuck no. Mm-hmm. We're not letting you take this guy. It's a pig. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. and. The Brits are like, honor must be satisfied. Mm-hmm. So it becomes this big pissing contest where, like, both armies are mm-hmm. getting ready to potentially start a war mm-hmm. between America and England over the pigs. You're right. Yeah. Like, they're aiming cannons and battleships. Like, it's oh, an I arms love it. race. I yeah. Love it. This is the best Coen's Brothers movie that does not exist. Right. Because there's yeah. so much gross incompetence and, like, <laughs> yeah. and like right. saber rattling, yeah. you know? It sounds fun. It would be the funniest yeah. fucking Coen's Brothers movie. It'd be mm-hmm. like Burn After Reading. Like, you put, like, mm-hmm. J.K. Simmons in there as one yeah. of the people. And it's all because two assholes were fighting over a pig. <laughs> uh-huh. And you know the guy who, like, killed the pig has nothing to do with it anymore. But, yeah. Like, once it becomes an arm race, he's just watching chaos happen. And it's like... <laughs> And you have to remember, they're so isolated, mm-hmm. right? Like yeah, they don't even they're, know what's they're in the middle of nowhere. So, like Washington and London have no clue that like yeah, right. a war is about to break out over a pig. <laughs> and like it just keeps escalating and escalating and escalating. Eventually, word gets back to Washington first, I presume, and Buchanan sends uh, a general, Winfield Scott, to go and resolve this. Uh, do you know who Winfield Scott is? Not really. Winfield Scott is a military like genius. <laughs> he is the main... Oh, Mexican-American War. He's the main guy in the Mexican-American War. This. You know the Anaconda plan from the Civil War? Yeah. yeah. He created it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Grant, Grant loved him. How yeah. does this happen? <laughs> uh, how? A simple letter. Leave the leave the fuck. Drop the pig. Like enough. Give him so a pig. So they send our like, best general. Best general. <laughs> yeah. That probably cost like five thousand dollars to get him there. They could have just sent yeah. three. Yeah. Think about this. Like, let's say he's in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Like, you have to get him all the way to Washington. <laughs> And then to like these remote islands. I need my best man on this. <laughs> Imagine getting there and finding out the whole yeah. story just like a pig. <laughs> a pig. You couldn't just <laughs> put the pig out of your yard. You had to kill the pig. So, oh, it's so funny. they get there and both sides agree that we're both going to retain a military occupation of the island until a settlement can be reached. <laughs> and they both have a token force of no more than 100 men on the island. Uh-huh. Just in That's case funny. something happens, yeah, right. it's only 100 men, and, you know, shit goes off. Which is a lot. It's, yeah, <laughs> yes, it's, it's a, it is. That's a mob. It's not a, it's not a giant island. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually, you know, the resolution is that that they're split into camps. Mm-hmm. I don't think the guy got his money. <laughs> I think he got fucked. But the interesting thing is that, you know, it's no longer like an active British campsite. Mm-hmm. But out of respect, if you go to that island, they Today, s- they still mean. raise the Union flag mm-hmm. in honor of like that they were there as right. like part of like honoring this treaty. That's funny. Did you know? And it is the only it is one of the only spots in the entire country where a foreign flag is hoisted by, like, official U.S. government uh-huh. shit, where it's not, like, an embassy or something like that. That's pretty cool. Did you know um, there's a Hey Arnold episode about this? Really? Yeah. What? No, I didn't. Yeah, the pig war. It's like a parody Oh, that's of funny. It. Really? Yeah. Uh, funny. Is that the one where Grandpa gets a, w- a pig, right? Well, they had Abner. a pig, yeah, yeah, but they they reenact the pig war. 
<laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Like every year. That's and then and the kids like go against there's like a British kid and Yeah, they put like they yeah. pretend. Yeah, yeah. 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 What is more ridiculous, the pig war or the great emu war? I think the emu war is more yeah. ridiculous. You think so? Yeah. Because, like, there's actual gunfire and shit. This is just saber But no, no people, like, almost died. Like, Didn't that was almost a, a major war. <laughs> <laughs> what about the peach tree war? That happened on Staten Island. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I never heard about that. Oh, this is actually a... Well, well, yeah. If you want to know about the peach tree wars... Get fucking ready Google it. Because we're going to do our <laughs> upcoming Staten Island history documentary. Oh, shit. Oh. So we can go to the location. It's like oh. my house. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready. You're going to find out where <laughs> Ant lives. We're going to show you his address. <laughs> <laughs> this is Ant's house. It was once the site of the historic beech tree wall. <laughs> we walk in, he's taking a shit. Just <laughs> <laughs> now there is a man taking a shit. That's history. History. <laughs> That's progress. <laughs> You've, I think you actually told me the peach tree was. Oh, funny. But... Um, I I do love that. Like, imagine if shit like didn't cooler heads didn't prevail. Yeah, and there's just a war between the United States and Britain Over in the 1850s. That would right. that would have been really bad. The Civil War may not have happened. Yeah, the whole world would be different <laughs> because yeah. it's like we have to deal with this. Right, I and mean, like we're having giant naval battles with them yeah, and right. shit. The whole world yes. almost exploded because somebody killed a pig. <laughs> yeah, it would be such a great Coen's Brothers movie. Yeah, yeah. It would be. You hear that, guys? If you're listening, make it. <laughs> <laughs> Call me. Write him the script, Call right? Yeah, write him the script. Yeah. We got a lot of scripts to write from this <laughs> this uh, podcast here. Come up with good stuff. <sighs> First oh, thing I got to write is my oh, Fartman biopic. <laughs> what? Uh, b- Fartman biopic. I'm writing a movie just about Fartman. Why? Just because I love Howard. Hoo-hoo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I'm fucking around. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Yeah, we're yeah, done. Of course. Yeah. Well, we well not yet. We're almost done. What do we got left? Well, we got to pick movies. Oh, oh shit, yeah, Jesus Christ, guys! What? Yeah, <laughs> you know that you, would be great if we ended it without doing that. We do that all the time, by the way, on the pick episodes. <laughs> yeah, we'll you're like, like, we're good, right? That's, that's it. <laughs> we can go, right? We can go. So I should we just go, not tell go people? Uh, I'll like go first. We no, we should. Oh, okay. I'll go first. Uh, I am picking the movie Driven, which is about the DeLorean. Uh, John DeLorean, the man and the car. And we're supposed to have a special guest from TESD Town. Oh. If you are familiar with the DeLorean you can assu- and TESD, you can assume we're having none other than Frank Five come down. I'm very excited about it to have Frank like come Frank. on and do the show. Uh, that is the plan. However, yeah. if when we do that... All right. So there may be a potential <laughs> hiccup because... You Ant's- don't need to tell them this. Well, hold on. Real quick, real quick. <laughs> I'm going to give a backup movie in case we can't. Oh, okay. All right. All right if yeah. So if it's driven, everything went smoothly and we got Frank. If shit went wrong <laughs> and we couldn't get Frank, we're doing 300. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. All right. Yeah, good call. So 300 if we if we <laughs> can't get Frank. Please, if we got the, Frank, we're doing driven. For the love of God, you better make it. <laughs> I don't want to do 300. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm picking Flowers of War, which Flowers is a, War. a Hong Kong Chinese movie. Flowers of War, fun. more yeah. like Flowers of Whore. <laughs> yeah, sure. Considering the subject matter, that was quite <laughs> insensitive. <laughs> what's the su- What's the subject matter? Oh, it's the rape of Nan King. Oh, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! That sounds comical. <laughs> <laughs> Steve. Uh, I want to pick something that I, I feel should be more popular. I don't know if it is. It's popular amongst us. I want to do Amadeus. Amadeus. The story Amadeus. of uh, Mozart. One, one of my favorite movies ever. One of your favorite movies ever? Yes. All right. So we're going to have a good time. I love Amadeus. Yeah, me too. I've uh, only uh, ever uh, seen it once. I think you're going to like it on the review. No, I loved it the first time. It's yeah. just like one of those movies where it's so long. It is very long. Yeah. You know, it's, it's worth it, though. You know? Mm-hmm. It'll be good. No, Amadeus is fantastic. Cool. And we get to talk about F. Murray Abraham, and yes. I'm excited to do that. <laughs> yeah. I like the uh, I like the lineup here. This is a good. This is gonna be a good month. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's it. That's it, guys. Yeah, why don't you give a uh, thank oh, yeah. you for listening. And, uh, I, so yeah, say bye. I have to do my stupid wrap-up. You guys do his wrap-up, yeah. Say bye. Okay, uh, bye. So thank you for you, listening, who guys. Who are you saying bye Perceivers. to? To the, specifically to the perceivers. He, the, the, he doesn't like the reviewers <laughs> at all. He doesn't even consider you fans. Remember that. Remember that for the upcoming battles. <laughs> the troubles. The troubles are starting. The troubles are starting again. <laughs> With their tanks and their bombs and their guns and their perceiving. <laughs> they see things. <laughs> reviewers. Reviewers. <laughs> They're fighting <laughs> on the pod, on the pod. <laughs> All right. Want to give a big, oh, mm -hmm. what do they uh, have to do? Oh, they got to like and subscribe. Smash that button. Ring that bell. All right. Want to give a big <laughs> thank you to everybody listening and or watching this on the YouTubes. Want to give a big YouTube's. Yeah. <laughs> Want to give a big thank you to Tell em Steve, Dave, Brywalt, Q, Get Em, Let us record down in the studio. It is always greatly appreciated. Uh, thank you all for listening. If you want to send an email, you can email us reviewinghistorypod at gmail.com. We will answer your email or on the show. The website. You can also go to the website if you want to contact us, reviewinghistorypod.com. Yes. There is merch up. I'm calling our shot now when this drops. The merch yeah. will be up. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, yeah, it will okay. be. Okay, you can <laughs> buy stuff. Should be. Should We'd be. appreciate if you did. In fact, at the end of this episode, our ad, which you may have already seen, is going to drop again. Uh, We're putting a commercial uh, in this. should. Yeah, it should well, be right? Okay. We got to make yeah, people aware. Let them know the high-quality items they could buy. Yeah. Mugs. Yeah. Hats. Sh shirts. Aunt sweaters. G branded sweaters. helmet. Sweaters. <laughs> you can wear a helmet. It looks, <laughs> looks like my haircut from last week. Yeah. <laughs> there may also be the green shirt. I don't know yet. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> the gr classic green the cla shirt. It's just called it's just to be called the classic green. <laughs> <laughs> Christian. <laughs> Maybe we'll put like a, a little reviewing history thing on the corner of the okay. screen shirt, though. You know, Ooh, that'd be nice. Yeah, it might be. It would probably be the ugliest thing <laughs> that we could do, but like I'll do it. I, why don't we put up the Kermit shirt? Can we put that up? The Kermit shirt. Well, is we can't. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get a cease and desist. I got so many comments about the Kermit shirt and how awesome it is. Did oh, you really? From who? The episode didn't come out yet in all time, but I'm calling my shot, guys. Was it emails that uh, you got from some random people? Is that what happened? <laughs> in my sock <laughs> you account? Yourself? <laughs> Brian, you look so awesome in your, your Kermit shirt. shirt. Your Kermit shirt is awesome. <laughs> uh, thank you all for listening. Well, uh, thank you, Clive. <laughs> uh, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It helps potential sponsors find the show. Also do the same on Spotify. Uh, like and subscribe on YouTube Smash the bell to get notifications All that shit Follow me personally on all social media That's Brian Rupert with two P's I have a letterbox I rank and review every single movie I watch In my personal life as well as for the show uh, You could see my list of how I rank every movie Thank you all for joining us We will see you next time With either Driven or 300 So you're in suspense for a week mm -hmm. Bye What do you guys think about Kiss? The like, band Kiss? Yeah, do you like think they ever got uh, too like commercialized? I mean, I love them to yeah. death, but you know, I think the endless merchandising 
it really hurts the image of the band. Do you think, you think it was so? a little too much? It's too much. <laughs> like kiss coffin, kiss condom. Yeah. Yeah. You like know? who needs that crap? I, I certainly don't. Yeah. Would you yeah. get yeah. like a kiss coffin? <laughs> Me? Like I am against branding. I'm against that stuff. Yeah. Mm. It's a cheap way to sell out. You have morals. Capitalism is all well and good, but yeah. To a point. I mean, let's have some dignity. I think it has yes. to be things people need, not <laughs> yes. just like extraneous right. items that right. are just there. Like if you need to keep your beard warm, you can use like a, a shirt to do it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, I think that's a good Who idea. Who needs a beard warmer when you have a perfectly good shirt? Yes, yes, exactly. Right. right. Yeah. Or like, you know, if you're thirsty. Yeah, you, you know, need. I mean, I've got this glass of uh, hot cocoa here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a sip of. Mmm, that's pretty warm. I'm feeling... Some heat. Woo. Oh man! I think I'll take this off. You're somebody oh, who doesn't yeah. like the heat. <laughs> I I hate the heat. I gotta be honest. Like like hotter than hell. You know. I just I like to stretch and really just like rub my pecs after right. the gym. Right. Yeah. You know. I've but been, you also like to be comfortable. I do. I've been right. working yeah. out. Like right. you know. Yeah. I've been working on my stretch. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Oh. What are the Beauty. back muscles called? Uh, culottes. 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 Yeah. Look at that definition. Yeah. You know, after a good workout, though, iced water is perfect. <laughs> right. Oh, it cools it, you down? Yeah. It, it, it cools parched, down. yeah, when you're parched. When you're yeah. parched. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Now, I'm not one to, like, try to sell merch or... No, but if you were... If I were, right. I would definitely have, like, a website for the podcast. Right. And it'd right. be something right. like reviewinghistorypod.com. <laughs> And there would be a bunch of See, different it options. Sensible. It seems yeah. sensible. You know, and colors you could choose from. You're right, not just, right. you don't have yeah. to pick black. Like, I would give options. You could do whatever you want. And like, exactly. Like, like, it, like a gray uh, almost. I a would gray, do maybe yeah, like stuff blue. for the winter, like hats. Hats? Hats yeah. are good. A yeah. truck? Yeah, sure, sure. Snap I like back. a hat. Practical things. Yes. Practical, Practical magic. Like, Kiss, mm. Kiss never did that. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, yeah. Who needs dolls? You need hats. Yes. You have to stay warm. And you comfortable have to shirts. And like you know, it has to be the best materials on earth, like cotton, cotton, soft, yeah. soft cotton stuff. is king. Soft it's the stuff. fabric soft of America. Stuff. It's fabric of our lives. Yes. yes. Look yeah. at Gandhi. Exactly. Uh. My friend, I'll tell you this. My yeah. friend demanded that the Yankees actually give up polyester and wear cotton because it was so comfortable. Really? Mm. Yes. Better than how that turn out. We don't need to discuss that detail. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, See That's you it. later. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> so that would hypothetically be reviewinghistorypod.com. That's reviewinghistorypod.com. <laughs> Put it on the screen. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah it's blinking. It's there. <laughs> <laughs>